Good morning, God bless you, and welcome to that walk of dominion once again. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Good morning. We are Dominion Outreach Worship Center, located in the heart of Newport News. We're so grateful this morning. The book of the Lord, Psalm 91, says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. In my, my God, in whom will I trust? Surely he will save you from the fowler snare, snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and your rampart. You will not fear the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness nor the plague that seeks to destroy at midday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 may fall at your right hand, but it will not come nigh you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the most high your dwelling, even the Lord who is my refuge, then no harm will befall you. When you make it down to verse 16, verse 16 says, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Would you say, with long life, he will satisfy me. Hallelujah. We declare that today. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that with long life, you will satisfy us. And God, we thank you this morning that we can come into the house of the Lord. We thank you that the doors of the church are indeed open. We thank you for everyone who is joining on this morning and every soul, oh God, that has made their way in the houses of God today. We just give you praise and we give you honor. We give you worth. God, we give you worship this morning because truly you are indeed worthy to be praised. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit this morning. And Holy Spirit, we invite you. We invite you. This is your house, O oh God, and we welcome you, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, that, Father, you saw fit to wake us up again. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to declare, to declare the word and the works of God. Lord, truly, you are mighty. You're mighty to save. You're mighty to deliver. And so, God, we come, Lord God. We exchange even now the garment of heaviness, oh God, for the spirit of praise. Father, we exchange it right now. We come into your presence, Father. You said to come into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. So, God, this morning we praise you. God, this morning we lift you. God, this morning we honor you for being God. And, Father, we thank you. There is an expectation, oh God, that you will deliver. There's an expectation that you will come through. God, there's an expectation that you will move. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that we have breath in our bodies to say praise the Lord. Would you just praise him this morning? Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Every praise is to our God. Do you believe that this morning? That every praise belongs to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we gotta tell our minds and our hearts to praise God. We have to tell our bodies, praise God. He got you up out of the bed this morning. Praise God. He gave you breath in your body. Praise God. The enemy thought he could keep you down and keep you defeated. But we praise God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you this morning. We come, Lord, for refilling of your Holy Spirit. God, we're asking you to fill us up until we overflow. Fill us up, oh God, until we overflow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's declare that he's awesome. Would you say it with me? He's awesome. He's awesome. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Lord, you're awesome this morning. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, you're awesome, you're awesome, you're awesome. Mm, nobody like our God. Nobody like our God.
the, let the fruit of your lips begin to honor him and to worship him on today. Hallelujah, we worship you. Come on, begin to honor him and begin to worship him. When you lift your voice before him, when you begin to lift your arms and lift your hands, then you begin to serenade him. His presence comes into the environment, in the atmosphere where you are. Come on, begin to just let worship fill the house. Even you online, I want you to stand up in your bedroom and stand up in your living room and stand up in your kitchen. I want you to stop what you're doing. Come on, I want you to just begin to lift your hands before the living God. We might and worship you. Hallelujah, we honor you, Jesus. We give you glory and honor. Come on, I'm going to wait on the song of the Lord from your lips this morning. Hallelujah, we worship you. Fill us up, oh God, in this place. Come on, let's begin to honor him and worship him. Somebody just ought to just tell him thank you this morning. Hallelujah, somebody just magnify him. Come. No, 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 no. We don't need music. We need uninterrupted worship from our own minds and our own hearts. Come on. Come on. This is a moment for you right here. Come on. You might as well get what you need right here. Hallelujah. 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 As good as God has been. Hallelujah. In every season and in every, uh, out of every season, the Lord our God has been mighty. Hallelujah. We thank you, O oh God. Oh, we magnify you in this place. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the tangibility of your anointing and your presence in our lives. Thank you, God, that you show up every week. Lord, that you meet us, O oh God. Lord, that you touch us in a special way. Oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that you have not forgotten your children. That you keep watch over each and every one of us in our lives. That you have not forgotten your children. That you provide for us each and every day. God, you have not forgotten about your children. That you make the ways out of no ways, God. That you have not forgotten about your children. You rebuke the devourer on our behalf. You have not forgotten about your children. You keep our bodies healthy and strong. You have not forgotten about your children. You protect us, oh God, from every stray violent act. You have not forgotten about your children. No matter what diagnosis may come, Lord, we thank you that you have not forgotten about your children. Can somebody bless his name? Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you, oh God, that you've been with us all week. Thank you, oh God, for the overflow that will flow on into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday until we come back again in this place to honor you again and worship you. We thank you for what's already been done and what you yet shall do. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Come on, somebody give the Lord a great dominion praise right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So take up residence in this service and have your way. Throw your way around if you have to. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. And amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm getting full right about now. Anybody feel like overflowing on your job? Overflowing in your family? Overflowing with your children? Overflowing until somebody has to come to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, give him one more praise right there. Hallelujah. God bless you, Dominionaires. You may take your seats this morning. Thank you for those of you who are tuning in and joining in with us on this Sunday morning. We, got, we thank God for you and God bless you for tuning right on in. Exciting things are happening here in the walk of Dominion. Would you just give your attention to the screen above me and to Sister Erica as she comes with a few of our morning announcements this morning. God bless you.
Ashley. Good morning. God bless you, millionaires, and welcome to the month of September. Yes. September to remember this year of 20 and 22. September is my favorite month because it begins two of my favorite seasons, which is fall and football. <laughs> so uh, we believe God has much more in store as we explore Him in this uh, month in His Word. Um, as you already know, this is our year of why, and we believe that God is answering some questions of previous years, months, weeks, and days gone by that will help each of us make sense of our realities. Our theme scripture is 1 Corinthians 1 and 27 from the New King James Version. I ask that we read this together. Ready? Read. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Aren't you glad that God doesn't choose the way that we choose? Hallelujah. Amen. But he makes choices according to his purpose and plans for our lives. It doesn't look like we have any first-time visitors in the house today, but if you are a first-time visitor online with us this morning, we ask that you leave us your name and where you're from, because we'd like to know who, who's watching us. And on behalf of our First Lady and Bishop, we, uh, I'm sorry, on behalf of the First, First Lady, we want to welcome you to the Dominion Outreach Center, also known as the Walk of Dominion. Also, if you're a first-time visitor online, or anyone else who wants to learn more about this ministry, please join, me during, join our Bishop on September the 18th at 12.15, either online or in person. Please go to www.dow.church to register and obtain more information. We have already begun our new theme, Covenant Connection, Marriage, Family, and Gender Identity. Now, if you missed the word this past Wednesday night, uh, please be sure to tune in and catch the replay either on our Facebook page or on our Dominion, Demand, our Dominion On Demand. Um, if you did miss it, you did miss a treat as Bishop discussed why marriages are under attack and some of the misconceptions about marriage. So let's lean in a little further as Bishop takes us deeper in the Word this morning on why covenant is so important. Tune in and tag a friend. For those who are watching online, it's critical that we understand it's about our covenant connection. Second time around. Join Bishop and First Lady on Monday night at 8 a.m. as they continue in the series, Hot Topics, Things to Discuss Before I Say, Before Saying I Do. Regardless of your status, they are giving us great tips, nuggets, nuggets, and useful information to help navigate relationships. We are truly grateful for their insight and willingness to share it with us. Till Tuesday. Join First Lady Tish on Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. for another episode of Take It to the Lord Tuesday. Each week she has featured um, a guest involving the school system and other prayer warriors as we prepare our children for the school year. And pray for administrators, principals, teachers, students, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, coaches, and all others who serve our youth. This week she will close with Anton Bell, Commonwealth Attorney for the City of Hampton. Please join her as she prays for city officials that lead us on the peninsula. Dominion Man and Women Bible Study. We will gather in our uh, growth groups on Dominion Man and Dominion Women again on Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. for our study in Henry Blackaby's Called and Accountable. Be sure to review Chapter 3 in order to be ready for this discussion. We will gather on our Facebook group page for Dominion Man and Dominion Heirs Women. Um, Wednesday night, please join Bishop Wednesday night at 7.30 as he re-engages the critical conversation concerning divorce and the schemes of the adversary. This week's episode will discuss healing, hope, and God's help in turning the tide in our culture. To, uh, tune in and tag a friend. And I stand here as a living witness of healing after divorce. Um, God is faithful. God is honorable. God will deliver. God will heal, yes, God will open doors, yes, God will restore, yes. God will give you back double for your trouble. And I yes. praise Him and I look forward to the discussion on this tonight. Hallelujah. Um, the Walk of Dominion is preparing for National Back to Church Sunday in Open House on September 18th. 
we encourage each of you to invite someone to join us for faith forming fellowship and a little food after Sunday service. Let's fill the house and invite others to experience the Lord's presence. Bishop, bishop's consecration. If you haven't registered for the bishop's fall, please be sure to do so today. The banquet will be on uh, Saturday, October 15th at 4 p.m. at the Marriott Center City. The consecration service will be held here at the Walk of Dominion on Saturday, October 15th at 11 a.m. The date to register and purchase ads for the souvenir booklet, booklet has been extended to September 15th. So please go online and register at www.aweekendofcelebration.com. Let us make the job of the team easier as we look forward to a great celebration in the Lord. We ask if you don't already, please follow us on social media. Facebook, um, Dominion Ministry fan page and Walk of Dominion group page. On Twitter, at Dominion Men, M-I-N. Instagram, at Dominion Economics. And the uh, Word of Dominion subscription at text, get the word, 71441. And we are diligently working on the newsletter and hope to have that out to all of you soon. At this time, we'd like to take a minute or two just to fellowship and welcome each other in the house of the Lord. Um, masks are available at the back of the sanctuary and in the foyer if you choose to wear one. Also, uh, please feel free to give each other Wakanda hugs. Um, COVID is still real and it is getting into food and cold season as well. So uh, we want to make sure that we keep each other safe. So we want to go ahead and please uh, fellowship at this time.
send your offering envelope to the choir to the church. You can give online at www.dow.church slash community giving. You can text Don Give to 40691. Or the most popular way is Cash App at dollar sign walk up D O M M I N. At this time, I ask that you please stand. If you need an offering envelope, just raise your hand and Deacon Steele will give you one envelope to you.
Come on, somebody ought to magnify him. Somebody call out, Lord, your mighty. Come on, Lord, your mighty. Lord, your mighty. Lord, your mighty. Come on, somebody magnify him right there. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you that you are mighty to heal, mighty to deliver, mighty to save, mighty to conquer, mighty to destroy down the territory of the enemy, mighty to lift us up and pull us out, mighty to keep us, mighty to heal us. We give your name all glory, all honor, and all praise. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Come on, somebody magnify him one more time. Hallelujah. I mean, do you believe that this morning? That the Lord indeed is mighty. Think about all of the things that could have happened to you just last week. The car accident that you avoided. The, the bill that got paid. The opportunity. The door that was open. The way that was made. Think about all of what could have taken place that did not take place. And that God kept you right in the middle of all things. That's enough for you to magnify it right there. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, and amen. I'm glad to be in the house this morning. How about you all? Amen. amen. Come on, let's look at our memory verse as we take the next installment of marriage, family, and gender identity. How many of you know that it is indeed under attack? Yes. And that Satan's plan is to pervert what God's original design and plan is for each and every one of our lives. But that he's coming at it in such a way where his plan is to actually lift himself up when the devil is alive. Amen, somebody? That God himself will be magnified and will be lifted up. Amen. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 on the screen behind me. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 on the screen behind me. This is our memory verse for the series this month. Proverbs 4 and 7. Let's say it together on 3. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Go ahead. Come on, let's do it one more time. One, two, three. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all your getting, get an understanding. I uh, spent some time this past week uh, with my pastor over in Ohio, uh, Bishop Eugene Bellinger, our covering for us here and for me personally. Wonderful time. My friend and brother, Bishop Darren Johnson, he preached, and then uh, Bishop Jeremiah Moore, and then I've got a special treat for you, and Jill Maddox will be with us in the spring. Uh, she's got something that she, uh, the Lord's given her in terms of the Dominion Decade, and I want it to be first released in the House of Dominion. Is that all right? Amen. I want to just go to this book of scripture here in the book of Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14, which is a very familiar pericope, if you will, of the, of the uh, accounts of Jeremiah in regards to the exile that was taking place with Nebuchadnezzar as he raided Jerusalem and destroyed Judah and had taken the people into captivity. Uh, but the Lord had a word for them. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so glad that God never leaves us in a condition without a word. And so in the midst of their difficulty, there was a word to them from the Lord through the prophet Jeremiah. Tell somebody I'm tied to him. That's important to know in this day and age of a uh, where people move in and out of scenarios and situations and circumstances. Anybody ever had a moment where you felt like somebody had taken you for granted? Where they felt like they could take you or leave you? Uh, yeah, yeah, God wants us to know that he is tied to us and that we are tied to him. He was Israel having gone through a moment where they find themselves in a difficult place under captivity in the land of Babylon, but Jeremiah begins to lift up his voice. He's a contemporary of Isaiah, and while he's lifting up his voice under the rule of tyranny of Nebuchadnezzar, he says these words uh, to the children of Israel in Jeremiah chapter 3 in the NIV version. First, verse 14, he says, Return, faithless people, declares the Lord, for I am your husband. Tell somebody I'm tied to him. I will choose you one from a town and two from a clan and bring you to Zion. 
Now, I, I, I memorized this verse in the, New King, in the King James Version, but I'm going to give you the New King's English Version of it. Verse 14 reads like this in Jeremiah chapter 3, verse 14. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord, for I am married to you, and I will take you one from a city and two from a family, and I will bring you to Zion. That's enough all in and of itself by itself. Help me preach this morning and say these words to somebody around in your near atmosphere. Say, neighbor, no matter where I go or what you do, you can't break my connection because I'm tied to him. Yeah, point at somebody on the other side of the room and say, neighbor, no matter where you go, no matter what you do, you can't break your connection because you're tied to him. Come on, let's try it one more time. Say, neighbor, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, I can't break my connection because I'm tied to him. I want to talk to you briefly this Sunday morning from the subject matter, covenant connection. I'm tied to him. I'm tied to him. Quickly, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Each of them, Lord, that are new every morning in each and every one of our lives. Thank you, God. Lord, that you look past where we are and you see what it is that we need and that is you. We don't need houses, no cars. We don't need a boo. We don't need cash. That is not what sustains us. No credit, no access to capital. God, for you are the ruler of all things. Help us to be a people that are steadfast in our relationship with you. Lift up somebody's head this morning, oh God, that may be heavy, feeling like because of a, a predicament, God, that you have left them. Remind the devil and remind us that you are tied to us by covenant. We thank you for what's already been done and what you yet shall do. Hide me in you so that your people only hear your voice and experience your presence. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Somebody say, I'm tired to him. You may be seated in the presence of the living God. I'm tired to him. I'm tired to him. It's only as we live in a day where the concepts and ideas and principles and practices of God are ridiculed. They're ridiculed because, as the scripture says in Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8, God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. If you keep on reading in the verse 9, you'll find these words. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts your thoughts. We live in a day and age where our culture believes that it knows better than God and about every asset, every facet, and every aspect of life. But how many of you know, like I know, God knows better than we do? Uh, before God sees the future from the beginning and has the ability to go back into your past and to make sense of your reality right in the middle of your present moment. And so because the God of heaven and earth and of the universe, he uses metaphors and similes and types and shadows to convey his meaning in a principal, practical way for how we ought to live every day in relationship with him, each other, and our environment. Tell somebody I'm tired to him. So when we think of, about the principle of the covenant of marriage as seen in the institution of marriage, we tend to view it through contemporary cultural lens. Our times have trivialized it to some idea of a piece of paper signed by a judge or justice of the peace. We try to anthropomorphically ascribe to the institution of covenant marriage with our ideas and concepts because of a lack of satisfaction in our fleshly desires. So we adjust it, we twist it, we turn it, we contemporize it until it becomes something perverted and promiscuous, full of pomp and circumstance. All the while, misunderstanding it as heaven's meaning of extending godly seed and kingdom legacy into the earth. Tell somebody I'm tired to him. Uh, simply what I mean, brothers and sisters, this morning and those tuning in, is that we tend to view it through a cultural lens where we infuse 
infuse a lot of our contemporary and worldly and fleshly ideas into it, uh, removing the God-designed purpose for it, for the extension of his will into the earth. And we infuse into it so much so uh, that it becomes cheapenized. It becomes some idea of a human understanding, some, some concept that is made up by the minds of men so that we can begin to feel comfortable in our own desires for why it is that we desire to come inside of it. And when we misunderstand God's intention and purpose for a thing, Miles Monroe said it this way, he said, abuse is inevitable. Tell somebody I'm tied to him. It is difficult to understand it because we have first failed at this very first understanding is that before we are tied to somebody else, we are in tied to and in covenant with God. Tell somebody I'm tied to him. All too often people try to enter into God's institutions, enter into God's promises, enter into God's practices, enter in and apply God's principles without understanding, like I said last week, the first thing is first. And the first thing is that you can't be connected with somebody else until you're first connected to God. Come on, somebody tell the truth this morning. See, as human beings, we are to be in covenant connection with Him first until He says it's not good for us to be alone or for all one. In other words, God's purpose and design for you, for your life, cannot be accomplished all within you. The reason that God said to Adam that it is not good for man to be alone or to be all one is because God understood I can't populate the earth through Adam all by himself so I will make for him a helper that is suitable. Somebody say suitable. Can I have about 30 seconds right there? Not everybody is suitable for you. Male or female. Not everybody understands your performatories and your idiosyncrasies. Not everybody understands your temperament and your dynamic of how you are in terms of who you are. But this is why it's important for us to consult God before we try to take next steps and engage in, in connection of relationship. Because God knows what it is that you need and God knows what it is that you want. And oftentimes we misunderstand and take what it is that we want for something that it is that we think that we need. Only to come to find out that we didn't need that anyway. You might as well just come on around the mountain with me and take the brakes off me this morning. It's going to get gooder and gooder in a few more minutes. Now that's bad English, but it's good theology. Tell somebody I'm tired to him. How many of you ever rolled over and woke up, just look straight ahead, don't look at nobody and find out I can do better than this right here? I don't, I, don't, I don't need this. I, I don't have to keep putting myself through this. And uh, you've ever heard the colloquial phrase and saying, I can do bad all by my... Uh -huh, all by myself. But understand that marriage is built on the principle of covenant. Somebody say covenant. It's built on the principle of covenant. Somebody say covenant. I said it's built on the principle of covenant. Somebody say covenant. The covenant of two persons who are bound together, watch this, legally in the courts of heaven first, for God's purposes first, and our purposes second. Can I say it again? I said marriage is built on the principle of covenant of two persons who are bound together legally in the courts of heaven for God's purposes first, and our purposes second. The image of the Godhead, Godhead itself is reflected in the covenant of marriage. Tell somebody these words, two become one. Uh, that's God's intended purpose, that two would become one. Can I give some scripture uh, uh, with this, this morning? If I was an old deacon, mother, I would say, can I give you some scriptures? I, I think her daddy used to say it like that. Y'all come around the table, I'm going to read the scriptures to you. Uh, so y'all come on around the table this morning. I'm going to read the scriptures, the scriptures to you this morning. Ephesians 5, 31 through 33. I'm trying to impress upon you the understanding about what covenant really means. How two individuals become one. Watch this. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one. Somebody say two shall become one shall become one flesh. Now we often read that with an understanding of the connectivity of, of intercourse and the consummation of a relationship that comes together. But I want to offer you a much more deeper meaning than that. When you look up the word flesh there, it has to do with humanity or the human being or the human existence here in the Greek. In other words, how two independent 
individuals become interdependent with each other and become one in temporal things of their life day to day. That's a mystery all in of itself by itself. How two people who don't think alike, two people who are not alike, two people who sometimes don't like each other, two people who get on each other's nerves, let me just look straight ahead, two people who bother each other, two people who work each other's nerves from one end of the house to the other. How two of them just come together and become one to the point where they start thinking each other's thoughts, finishing each other's sentences, being able to understand. I felt something in my side and the other one is hurting their side. I felt something in my toe and something is going on with the other one. That's how two become one. Tell somebody I'm joined to him. I'm going somewhere. I got a license to drive. We're going to get here in a minute. This is a great mystery, but I speak, Paul says, concerning Christ and the church. Come on, Genesis 1, 26 through 28. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creepy thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, here it is, in the image of God, he created him male, somebody shout male, and female, somebody shout female, he created them. See, what I want you to understand here is that the Godhead, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are reflective of this principle of how two become one in the Holy Spirit. Watch it this way, the husband and wife become one in their children. Somebody say two become one. The Father and Christ become one in the Holy Spirit, and Christ and the Holy Spirit become one in the church. And these are inextricably tied together, and you can't get one without the other. So much so is the principle of covenant that you're not supposed to get one without the other, that you're supposed to get both of them together. And when you get both of them together, they show up and become one. Y'all don't want to talk to me this morning. See, we have contemporized it, and we have put our cultural inferences in to what God's design is of how two people become one. So to the point where you see one, you see the other. When you hear one, you hear the other. When you experience one, you just experience the other. Can I preach for a little while right through here? Let me show you in the scriptures and the scriptures of how two become one. I really didn't know how to say that word, but I just feel like talking this morning. Look at John chapter 10, verse 30 on the screen in front behind me. Jesus said these words. Words, I and my father are one. John 17 and 11. Now I am no longer in the world, Jesus said, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. Anybody here yet this morning? John 17 and 21. Am I in the Bible or am I in the Bible? That they all may be. That they all may be, that they all may be as you, Father, in me and I in you. That they also may be one where in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Such is the principle of two becoming one, that Jesus would be in the Father, and that the Father would be in Jesus, and that the two of them would be one. So much so that the world around us would come to understand and know that God sent Jesus because Jesus was never independent from the Father. Can I talk for a little while? They are tied together. Somebody say, I'm tied to him. Watch Jesus in John 14 and 10. I feel it now. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Somebody say, they're tied together. Come on, can I go a little bit deeper? Watch it with the tying together with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He says this in John 16 and 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you of things to come. Such is the unity between the Holy Spirit and between Christ, that the Holy Spirit doesn't speak unless he hears Christ speaking, and Christ doesn't speak unless he hears the Father speaking. See, in our day and age, we have contemporized it so much so uh, that the husband's opinion can be different from the wife's, and the wife's opinion can be different from the husband, and the two of them can't get on the same page. I came this morning to lift up my voice and say, that's a work of the devil right there, because the devil wants to bring about 
disagreement and disunity. And if he can ever bring about disagreement and disunity, he can begin destroying what it is that God wants to do in the earth through reduplicating himself in godly seed and extending the kingdom of heaven throughout the earth. I see y'all looking at me like I got five heads this morning, so I might as well work right here for a little bit, right for a little while. See, listen, but, but the, the plan of the enemy is, well, let me go back to the scripture for a second. The Bible says, if any two of you, come on, somebody say two. If any two of you would agree as touching, nothing will be denied you. We often say it like this, touch and agree. No, it's an agreement as if you're touching to where your fingers are interlocked in with each other. So is the covenant supposed to be where you are tied together. I wish I had a few minutes right through here because sometimes it's important. Uh, listen to me, men that are watching and men that are in the room. It's important for you to say, you know what? I need to check with my wife about that because we are one. Ladies, I need to check with my husband about that because we are one. And if the other two of you can ever get on the same page, I heard the Bible say uh, that two, but one could chase a thousand, but two could put ten thousand to fight. And if you ever could get an agreement with those that you are in covenant with, such is the power of God that will show up in your life. I feel an interruption coming in this message right here. Consider the Tower of Hell, such is the power of covenant agreement that God Himself had to stand up uh, up off of His throne because the people had become one. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 11 that they began to build a tower toward heaven when the commandment was for them to disperse out. Come on, they began to build a tower toward heaven and the commandment was for them to disperse out. We as human beings have something about wanting to do things our way, wanting to be independent and do what we want to do, the way we want to do it, how we want to do it. God himself says uh, there's such power of agreement that the people have become one in their vision and their focus that I got to get up and I got to come down and I got to scatter them and I got to watch this confuse their languages so that they can't communicate with each other because if not they will build a tower straight on up in here because they have gotten in such unity. Do you hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Whenever you get in the power of agreement in your house, whenever parents can get on the same page with children and children can get on the same page with parents, Doomless power will be released. What you mean, Doomless power, preacher? I'm talking about dynamite that will blow up the plan of the enemy in your life. If ever congregations can get together, where there's a connection between pastor and people, and people and pastor that agree with God, an explosion will happen in a community. Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you this morning? Such is the power of agreement and covenant, and all too often we fall out with each other because somebody somewhere misunderstood something, miscommunicated something, or mishandled something, and then all of a sudden a break happens and occurs. But God wants somebody to know just because some crazy took place in your life, I ain't changed my mind about how I feel about you. I ain't changed my mind about what I said I'm going to do in your life because I'm tied to you. Somebody say he's tied to me. Look at this. So it's in covenant. It's in the covenant institution of marriage. The husband is reflective of the father and the father of the wife of her husband and the children reflective of their parents. And, and, and listen, and somehow a renegade spirit of independence and rebellion has gotten into culture and crept into the institutions of covenant. I, 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 said, I said that the husband is to be reflective of Christ and the wife reflective of her husband and the children reflective of their parents. Can I have about 25 seconds right there? You remember when you were in school, when you were young? Maybe y'all didn't grow up like I did, but, uh, uh, but, but, but when I went into search stores with my mother back in the day, you know, we would go to church. Back then it was called Mercury Plaza, and Tallheimers was on one end. Come on, who am I talking to again? We would go inside of Tallheimers, and my sister and I, we would be trying to pull everything down off the shelf, and suddenly it just got so bad one time that she just stop that little, I remember that little kind of gold colored, uh, 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 or maybe a bronze colored, I came out to see the pinto in my head with the black leather on the inside of it, that's what she used to drive, and so she pulled into a parking space, parked the car, fit to turn around, and she said, let me tell y'all something today. When we get in this store here today, don't nobody touch nothing, don't nobody say nothing, and don't nobody do nothing. Because if you do, I ain't gonna wait till we get home. I'm gonna take care of it right here in this store. 
My sister and I, we got out the car, we were marching in lockstep. It was almost left, 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 right, left, 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 right, left. Because she turned around, she said, y'all not going to embarrass me in this store today. Somebody need to know, and some child need to know, some teenager need to know, that you are reflective of your parents. You are reflective of their training and their discipline. You are reflective of who they are. So though you can't get out here in these streets and act a fool like nobody ain't never taught you nothing and nobody ain't never said nothing to you. See, parents, we gotta get bold enough to get. See, here's a difficult moment. I feel something came in here right now. Listen, we gotta get to a point where we gotta stop trying to be our child's friend. No, you're their parent. Your responsibility is to train them and to develop them in the admonition of the Lord so that they when they become parents, foolishness will stop in your generation. Somebody give the Lord a praise right there. I feel something coming in here. See, here is the thing, here is the thing, here is the thing, here is the thing. You have to watch, my God. You have to watch over your child's destiny. They may act the fool right now, but you can't allow them acting the fool right now to determine who they're going to be when they're 30 and 35. I thank God that the Lord sent my parents to stand hard over me. My father was so strong that he would say, whatever you want to do in Virginia Union, that's your business. But when you come here to 68 Santa Barbara Drive, that's my business. And because it's my business, you're going to do it my way. And you're going to do it my way and walk my way and do what I say. So whatever you want to do on Saturday, that's your business. But come Sunday morning, you're going to be in the house of the living God. I'm holding my microphone, microphone right now because there was a man that stood up over top of me. Can I just tell the truth this morning? Even moments when I was ready to give up and to quit and to throw in the towel and say, God is not going to do it. It's over for me. It can't happen and take place. So he would walk into his office that he was on loan to me at that time. See, I was just on loan as the pastor did. He was still the pastor in my mind. He walked into the office, closed the door, locked it, and said, who called you? Y'all don't want to talk to me again this morning. He said, who called you? I said, well, I said, I, I said, well, that God called me. He said, good. He said, all I've done is confirm what God has already said to me concerning you. Now stand up, straighten up your back, and act like you're my son, and that you've been sent by the living God. See, sometimes you got to be man enough and woman enough to get in your child's face, or man enough and woman enough to get into your spouse's face. Can I push the, push the arm along a little bit further? There were more times where I wanted to quit, more times where I wanted to give up, more times where I wanted to study and study and throw in the towel. And y'all nice, sweet, effervescent, lovely, fine, good-natured, uh, uh, what else can I say about her? A uh, uh, pleasant, a uh, uh, well-spoken, articulate first lady. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was sitting in my little cage, she came in, cut the TV off one time, and to close the door, and those little kids couldn't hear and said, you're going to do what God has told you to do. She got serious one time, she said, did you hear me talking to you, Raymond Johnson? You are going to do what God has told you to do, and I expect to see God's results coming through you in your life. Walked out, closed the door, didn't apologize, didn't say nothing else about it, because she wasn't so much concerned about my feelings. See, that's part of the difficulty that we have in our time. We're so much concerned about feelings that we're not willing to run a devil out. Sometimes you ain't got time to be worried about somebody's feelings, but you got to run the devil out of somebody's life to ensure that God's will will be done and that his kingdom will come. Now, I say all of that to say that because God is tied to you, he is not concerned about your present state of what you think. He's not concerned about your present state of how you feel. He has an agenda of what he's going to do in your life. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. The plans of a future and of a hope and of an expected end. You think that you get in trouble right now, but I've already orchestrated your life for, for you to go through this little bit of not heaven because this battle is not yours. This is what you need. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
there. And we've got to think about well, so what happens is an independent spirit creeps in to the principle of covenant to get us to a place where we all start to think our own thoughts and move the way that we think that we ought to move and handle things the way that we think we ought to handle things. Uh, but God is saying, I'm tired to you, and if you'll just trust me, I'll see you through to the end of your experience. Which is to say, in this text, this is exactly what happened to Israel. They became full of an independent spirit. But God said to them, I'm still tired to you, just return to me. i got to press pause right here in this message and tell somebody, even though you may have gone your own way, even though you may have gotten yourself into trouble, God sent me with this word to tell you he's tired to you. You may have gotten struck out, and you may have messed up, and you may have gotten a little bit confused, but God says, I love you and I'm tired to you. You may have acted out of your own emotion and acted out of the way that you feel and acted out of the way that you perceive things, but God says, I'm tired to you. Come on, somebody say, he's tired to me. You may have gotten filled with many lovers and filled with a lot of idolatry and not always done things the right way, but God says, I'm tired to you. You may have picked up a worldly ideology and a worldly worldview, but God says, I am tired to you. Just return back to me and allow me to lead and guide your life because I'm in covenant with you. Somebody give the Lord a praise right there. When I think about all of the things that I've done, all the directions and all the ways that I've uh, veered away from the Lord and strayed away from the Lord, only to understand that God is still tied to me. See, we keep trying to be perfect people, but God never really wants us to be perfect people. He wants us to be imperfect people that are perfected by His presence in our lives. So sometimes God allows imperfections just so that we can experience His presence, and in that presence, we begin get to change. Come on, somebody give a Lord of praise right there. So I thought Pastor sitting here watching at home this morning, I kept reading this particular verse of scripture in Jeremiah chapter 3 and 14, and I said, well, Lord, if you want me to tell the people that you are tied to them by covenant, and that they are tied to you by covenant, how is it, Lord, that we come to know that we are tied to you, and that you are tied to us? Anybody ever wondered that this morning? How do I know that I'm in covenant relationship with God, so much so to the point that he's tied to me. I'm so glad that you asked the question this morning and the way that you know that you are tied in the covenant relationship with God and he's tied to you and you are tied to him is because God keeps on calling you. Come on in here, talk to me, somebody. I said, because God, uh, oh, the image I had in my mind, Erica, was like Ruby from New Jack City and he calling me. Yeah, there are moments where you try to get distant from God, but he keep calling you. There are moments where you try to go away from God, but he keep calling you. There are moments where you try to act like you don't belong to God, but he keep calling you. There are moments where you try to go your own way and do your own thing, but God keeps on calling you. Look at the text with me in so verses 12 and 14. God calls out to Israel and says, return unto me. Look at verse 12 to be close. You're looking at me. You haven't looked at your Bible yet. Look at verse 12, the B clause of Jeremiah chapter 3. He says, I will not cause my anger to, to my anger to fall on you, for I am merciful, says the Lord. Here it is. I will not remain angry forever. I need somebody to understand and to know God ain't mad with you. God understands you. He understands your, your perfunctories and idiosyncrasies. He understands the motivations and the triggers that the enemy pulls on you to drive you into certain things, which is why we as God's people, we can't never judge nobody because you don't understand what their life experience was like and what happened to them and what took place to them. You can, this is why we got to get our mouth off of people and let God be God and we just be a people that love everybody because God understands what happened in 
have somebody's background that pushes them into certain decisions and pushes them into certain choices. God wants you to know what your religious sanctified sanctimony is something he's still tied. The Bible said he's married to the backslider. Every person that's doing their own thing that ever met the Lord, God says, I'm still married to them. They're still mine. They can't even dance the same way. They can't even hide. Don't even keep them like it used to. Uh, the, the, the cocaine can't even stay in their system. Why? Because I'm tired to them. Y'all don't like that kind of preaching right there. There are people on the street right now that are inside of our patrons program that will preach me up under a table right now. But because they are no loss right now, you we think that God cannot use them, but God wants them to pull them back into Him because He's tied to them. Somebody say He's tied to me. I need to somebody to know God is not mad at you, that God actually wants you. Like a husband who longs and desires for his wife. I need somebody to know that God wants relationship with you. Let me point my hand at the cameras this morning and tell somebody, I don't care where you've done, where you've gone, where you've been, and what people have said about you. I want you to know that God is tied and married to you. Just return back to him. Somebody give a Lord a praise right there. Everything in our walk with God is based on God's call in our lives. In Genesis 11, God called out to Abraham and said these words to him. He said in, in verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your own country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. Can I have some time right there for a minute? What keeps us from coming to God when he calls is that we got to have all the details. That's an independent spirit. God has never called us to be independent from him. He's called us to be interdependent with him. Come on somebody. Interdependent with him. He says, get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. Sometimes we stay in certain bondages because they are familiar to us. We stay in certain connections because they are familiar to us. Great granddaddy did it this way. Great grandmama did it this way. Great 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 did it this way. Well, when are you going to be one of those that breaks the pattern and destroys the mold and creates a new pathway? You got to be the one that breaks a pattern and destroys the mold and creates a new pathway. Why? Because God is wed to you. Uh huh. I said, God is wed to you. Look at this one here. When Abraham got ready to sacrifice his son in a moment of God's obedience, it was the call. Somebody shout call. It was the call of God that Abraham heard to bring him a sacrifice. Can I stop here again for a second and tell somebody that covenant is based on sacrifice. You can't just come to God any old kind of way. You've got to bring God what he requires. You can't just come to God and say, Lord, I want to be in relationship with you. Well, what do you bring? What do you have to offer? Some of us, we ain't got nothing to offer but our own will. And God says, good, bring me your will and let my will be done in your life. Some of us, we ain't got nothing to bring God for time. He says, good, I am the author of time. I know the beginning from the end and I'll meet you right in the middle of it. Some of us, all we got is a little bit of money. God says, good. Bring me the money because I own the cattle on a thousand hills and I will provide for your every need. Anybody in here this morning that some of us, all we can bring God is our intellect and our understanding. God says, good for my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. We got to learn to bring God a sacrifice. And so when we bring Bring God a sacrifice. God then is pleased and knows that he can begin to trust you. Look at Genesis 22 and 12. Look at what God did to Abraham. He says, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For I know that you fear 
the Lord, since you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. God found out in that moment that he could trust Abraham. But I came to tell you this morning that covenant does not work without a sacrifice and covenant does not work without trust. You're going to have to get to a place where you trust God and God will never stop calling out to you. See, sometimes I need somebody to know that God called Abraham twice. Abraham, but Abraham. He called to Adam twice. Adam, Adam. He called to Moses twice in the burning bush. Moses, Moses. When he was teaching his people about the kingdom of God, he said, verily, verily. See, some of that don't make too much sense until you understand that, that the independent spirit got the best of you. And that God come, will keep calling out to you, even if he got to call out to you twice. Come on, anybody in here where God had to call out to you twice? Because you didn't get it the first time, and God kept on calling to you? See, God will never stop calling out after you. He'll never stop pursuing you. People may stop pursuing you. Others may turn their back on you. But God never will. He will keep calling out to you. Is there anybody in here this morning that's glad that God will keep calling out to me? Somebody how I'm tired to him. Come on, number two. The reason of the way that I know uh, that I'm in covenant relationship with the living God is because the covenant don't begin with me. It begins with God. I said the covenant doesn't begin with me. It begins with God. See, here is what we have to remember. God starts all of this. See, what this does is it sets you free from you trying to do everything yourself. It releases you from the obligation to be in control. When you let God be God. Look at, how, look at, look, look at, look at, look at what he did with Noah. God was his, the initiator of covenant. He says this in Genesis 6 and 18 on the screen behind me. But I will establish my covenant with you and you shall go into the ark. You, your sons, your wife, your son's wives with you. Can I read that one one more time? Because I don't want it to go by too fast. Genesis 6 and 18. But I will establish my covenant with you. He says to the Lord, you shall go into the ark. You, your sons, your wife, your son's wives with you. See, during this time, God had grown weary because all of the thoughts and intents of man's heart was wickedness in the earth. And God got tired. The Bible says he actually was regretful or repented that he had made man. And in the middle of that moment of him repenting that he had made man, God said, I got somebody that I will be in covenant with. And some of you need to get connected to somebody that's in covenant with God so that the covenant can show up in your life. I don't think you understood what I just said. I said, some of you watching this morning, you need to get in a covenant connection with somebody that is in covenant with God. Because if you're in a covenant connection with somebody that's in covenant with God, the covenant that they have with God will be the same covenant that will show up for you. Sometimes God don't bless you just because you're you, my God, in here, I feel preaching. I'm walking in what I'm walking in because this don't even really belong to me. This belongs to my great-grandmother who walked with God first, who caused my grandmother to walk with God, who caused my parents to walk with God so that I can now walk with God. That don't make too much sense to you understand. There are some calamities that can't happen in your life because God's got a covenant with somebody in your bloodline. Here it is with Abraham. Then God said, No. Did anybody ever handle God's no? God said, No. Sarah, your wife, shall bear you a son. And you shall call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. See, see most of us. We get a little offended by that for those of you who are watching that nobody in here uh, because the Bible says 
that God heard Ishmael. His name means God hears. It's not that God doesn't hear Ishmael, but his covenant is not with him. God hears people when they pray. But his covenant is only with those who have named him as Lord and Savior in their life. God hears the heathen when they pray. But he doesn't move always on the heathen's behalf. But God moves on your behalf because you're in covenant with him through the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody give the Lord a praise right there. Let me qualify for you. Galatians 3 and 29. And if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Even Jesus, he established relationship with God based on covenant. And he established relationship with his disciples based on covenant. Look at Mark 3 and 13. Here it is with the 12 apostles. And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted and they came to him. I need somebody to know that you are tied to him because he keeps calling after you because he's in covenant with you. Somebody can go to praise right there. I'm getting ready to land the plane this morning. So here was the last one. How do you know that you are in covenant with him and tied to him? This is my one right here, Eric. And as I studied through this one, this is the one that got me. I appreciate the fact that God keeps on calling me. I appreciate the fact that God is the initiator of covenant himself. But this is my one right here. Uh, th th this is the one, a uh, buddy, that does it for me right here. I know that I'm in covenant with God because every time I confess, God is consistent. Huh? I said every time that I confess, God is consistent. Yeah, tell somebody I'm tired of him. See, confession is a bedrock component part to covenant. When we hear that colloquial phrase, confession is good for the soul, it's because it puts us in the posture of humility and accountability. It absolves us of the responsibility of being God. But we have to audibly give our agreement to him to have his way and establish his covenant in our lives. The Bible says it this way, let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. We can't even get saved without confession. Uh, uh, we can receive the forgiveness of our sin without confession. Come on. First John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Romans 10, 9 and 10. Here it is again. And if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says, then you shall be saved. Verse 10 is the verse. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's why it matters what you say out of your mouth. Because confession is what causes you to come in agreement with whatever it is that you say. So sometimes you have to begin to confess out of your mouth, I am the head and not the tail. You gotta confess out of your mouth, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You gotta confess out of your mouth, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You gotta confess it with your own mouth, not based on how you feel, but you gotta confess it because you're in covenant with God. Sometimes God's just looking for you to open your mouth and to say what he's already said so he can get an agreement with you and you get an agreement with him so he can start moving in your life. You gotta confess I'm out of debt. You gotta confess I'm healed. You gotta confess I'm employed. You gotta confess
it's the praises of his people. So if we ever will begin to praise him and bless him through confession, we then invite God into our environment. And when God gets in our environment, everything has to change. Everything has got to be different. So instead of just quoting or instead of rehearsing of the scene that you see, confess what it is that God wants to see about the environment and watch things begin to change. Somebody say, confess it. See, look at this. Look at this right here. There is something about audible confession out of the mouth and belief in the hearing that sets one free and establishes our covenant with God. And in this text, what happened to Israel is they got into trouble because they pledged or gave themselves to foreign gods. Like we do in our culture, we give ourselves to that which is foreign. I promise you, just five to ten more minutes, we've done a man and play. Look at Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 31 and 16 on the screen behind me. And the Lord said to Moses, Behold, you will rest with your fathers, and this people will rise and play the harlot with the gods of foreigners of the land, where they go to be among them, and they will forsake me and break my covenant, which I made with them. Deuteronomy 32 and 16. They provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods, with abominations that provoked him to anger. Joshua 24 and 20. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will return, he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. Joshua 24 and 23. Now therefore, he said, put away the foreign gods which are among you and incline your heart to, to the Lord God of Israel. Joshua went on to say, if it seemed good to you. Uh, to serve the gods of the Amorites and the Amalekites and the Baals and the Asherites, Asherites. you go head on and, and, and do that. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. See, we're in a time where we're picking up cultural, normalized behaviors and allow them to be practices of ours in our time without adhering to what it is that God requires. And I kind of said to us this morning that the blessing of the Lord in our life is only made evident when we adhere to what God requires. Now we may have gone through moments where we may have messed up in some areas before, but that's okay. As long as we get back in agreement with God, God says, I'm tired to you, and I will turn things around for you in your favor. Look at the text. The text said that God said to Israel, only acknowledge your iniquity, hidden sins, that you have transgressed against the Lord your God and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree and have not obeyed my voice, says the Lord. Look here, this word, uh, uh, th th this word charms here is the word dera. It's, it's written, it looks like it's pronounced Derek, but it is actually Derek. It is Strong's H1870. Here is what it means. It means a way, road, a distance, a journey, or a manner. It's a roadway, a path. It's a journey that one takes. It's a direction that one is in. It's a manner of habit. It's a course of life, a moral character. Now, when you put it all together, here's what you have. You have your habits and ways in the course of life. Life that corrupts your moral character. It's your ways that corrupt you. In other words, how have we chosen to live? And we know our culture has some ways, doesn't it? Doesn't our culture have some ways? Our culture has some ways that gets us into trouble with God. And then we wonder, how in the world did I end up in this predicament? How in the world did I end up in this place? How in the world did I end up in this debt? I feel preaching. How in the world did I end up in these moments? God, I thought you said you'd never leave me nor forsake me. I didn't forsake you. You forsook me because you took on your ways in the 
the ways of this world that were not consistent with my ways, but that's all right. I'm still tied to you. How do you know God's tied to me, preacher? Because in the same time when Israel would get away from God, God would raise up kings and he would raise up prophets. And Jehoshaphat was one that took a stand for God's ways and took a stand for God's practices and his principles. And God said to Jehoshaphat, tell the people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then I will hear from heaven. God said, I hear what heaven's will is, and I will heal their land. If American people will humble themselves and pay, pray, if, 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 if Christian people, black, white, yellow, red, brown, if we are called by his name, if we will humble ourselves and pray, then God said that he will hear from heaven, and he will hear their land. Here is the shout, forgive their sins. See, it's the ways that cause you to commit the sin. And if you will then just acknowledge your ways are not consistent with God's ways, God says, I will step right into where you are and I will straighten everything out because I'm tied to you. I'm married to the backslider. Is there anybody in here this morning that is thankful that God is married to you? No matter what I go, no matter what I do, no matter what I get into, no matter what lifestyle practice I have, is tied to me. This is why you can't never let people call you something outside of your name because God is married to you and tied to you. Don't you let people label you because of activities and behaviors because God is married to you and tied to you. And if you ever make up your mind that you'll call that out to God like he's calling out to you. If you ever make up your mind that you'll be consistent with God, that he is consistent with you. If you ever make up your mind that you confess to God and allow him to fix it for you. Change will happen in your life. Somebody call her, I'm tied to him. I'm trying to get away from this this morning, but God wants somebody to know right in the middle of your mess, he's tied to you. Just cry out to him. Somebody give the Lord a praise right there. I'm going to lay up this plane right here this morning. Here it is right here. We started this message with marriage as a metaphor for how God is in covenant relationship with us. Wayman didn't just infer this. The text says that God says that he is married uh, to the backslider, that he is in covenant relationship with those who turn their back on him. He uses that metaphor as a means of communicating and understanding about covenant. See, covenant is always meant to keep people tied together because it is a legal bind in the courts of heaven. Never go into relationship with anyone, anybody, any ministry, any business, any idea that's not authorized by heaven first. Never, never, never get tied into that because God's only obligated to bless what it is that he authorizes. Come on, somebody. And so in this particular text, we just read verse 14, but we never really got down to verse 15. I'm going to land the plane on verse 15. Because God is tied with us by covenant, he says these words to Israel, I will give you shepherds after my own heart. Uh-huh. And, and I, they will lead you and guide you into understanding. See, Israel, as an as a, a agrarian society of agriculture, they were a people that had shepherds that would guide their sheep. And coming to understand our relationship with Jesus Christ, he is the chief shepherd, and we are all sheep. Sometimes sheep can go astray. And can go into pastures that are not good for them, and they can eat things that disrupt their diet, that cause them to become ill. Mm. When they become ill, that messes in that culture, in that economy, with the wool that is produced. And if the wool doesn't have a certain weight to it, if it doesn't have a certain texture to it, if it doesn't have a, 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 the right compound to it, it's not good to be used when it's time now uh, to shear the sheep and to use that to begin to provide other products that are good for Israel's economy. What you're saying, preacher, that sometimes we take in 
taking things that are not good for our diet. And when we take in things that are not good for our diet, it messes with what's produced out of us. And what's produced out of us sometimes doesn't look like what God intended because we eat in the wrong places and can eat of the wrong things. But God says, I love you so much that I'm going to give you good counsel. I'm going to give you good counsel that's going to tell you where to eat and tell you where to go and tell you what's good. I'm going to give you good counsel uh, that's after my heart that can lead you with understanding. I told you uh, that whatever, whatever it is that we uh, have an understanding about, we can stand under. And so God gives us shepherds because the truth of the matter is I just didn't know. I just didn't know that living with him before marrying him was going to use up all my resources. I just didn't know. I, 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 I didn't know that she looked good on the outside, but she couldn't put together a ham sandwich. I just didn't know. I, I, I just didn't know uh, that allowing myself uh, to put stuff into my body would cause me to now be in a latent state where I made certain decisions that would put an entanglement and an ensnaring in my life. I just didn't know. See, sometimes we've got to be able to heal the good counsel. But because of the independent spirit, we get big and bad and broad and can't nobody ever tell us nothing. So God raises up shepherds to give good counsel to tell you where to eat and how to eat and when to eat and what kind of food to eat. You've got to be sure to get yourself into good counsel. And this morning, I want to tell somebody that God's raising up good counsel in your life. That can help you eat what he has already prescribed for you. Come on, somebody standing on your feet. I feel like preaching some more. The time has gotten away. It's already gone. It's already gone. I, I, I want to say to somebody uh, uh, that, 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 that's listening to me. You, you're in the state that you're in uh, because of the counsel that you received. A lie that you listened to that ended up making a decision for you. But the Lord sent me with this word to break it and set you free. To break it and set you free. Come on, would you just lift your hands right where you are? All of us in here know Jesus. And most of us already are in relationship with him. I came to pray for the believer this morning. I came to pray for the believer to break you out of routines and cycles of a predicament that keeps showing up in your life. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for the walk of dominion today and every dominionaire, every dominionaire partner, all those who are listening in and watching and even those downstairs that are here this morning. Father, I pray for them. Lord God, that you'll begin to reveal to them the repetitive cycles that must be broken in their lives. God, I pray, Lord, that you would cause an, a, 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 a divine intelligence that interrupts their human ingenuity where they will begin to make better decisions. I thank you, God, Lord, that routines and cycles are being broken in their lives where they can choose, Lord God, and how to honor you and stay in covenant relationship with you. I thank you, Lord, for what's already been done and what you yet shall do. God, that they're not going back to that mountain of Sinai again, but Lord, they have already come through the hill of Golgotha, and I thank you, oh God, for new life for each and every one of them in their lives. I thank you, Lord, that generational curses. We know that they were broken on the cross. But God, I thank you for rooting out hidden iniquities that will keep them in same repetitive patterns. And that God, that you'll break it and Lord bring them into relationship with you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Somebody give the Lord a praise right there. Hallelujah. I got more word, but we out of time. Does that bless anybody here this morning? Hallelujah. I feel God in this place. If you prayed that prayer this morning, here's what I want you to do. I want you to visit us in the World of Dominion at Dow.Church. Click on that flyer, that green flyer, New Life in Christ. Click on that. It begins with a renewed mind there. And I simply want you to put your information in. And after you put your information in, four more videos show up of us talking to you about what it means to be in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody? Amen. I feel revival about to break out of here. I feel revival. I'm talking to somebody downstairs who came in for a meal this
this morning, right through the floor, I want you to know God is tied to you. Y'all excuse me for a minute. God is tied to you. Somebody that just walked in the door, you came in for a meal, but God wants you to get this word. No matter how high you get, no matter what you put in your body, no matter how much alcohol you drink, no matter how much addiction you're in, no matter how homeless you are, how destitute, how broken you are, no matter what took place in your life, I don't care if your mother didn't say she loved you. I don't care if your father didn't say she loved you. I'm talking to somebody downstairs. I don't care what took place in your life. I want you to make sure that you're in here by 10 and talk Sunday morning because this word is for you. God sent us here just for somebody like you. I know you're going to leave out today and say, that preacher is crazy. He has lost his mind. I am not crazy. I have not lost my mind. God sent us in here with this word just for you. Even after you get high and do what you do, God wants you to know he's still tied to you. You might as well tell the Lord yes. My God in here. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Come on, let's, let's, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Cheryl, I might start doing the service downstairs. Because y'all know we wired up already. We, 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 we got wiring downstairs where we can hold the service done like all y'all used to do back in the day, brother. Hold the service downstairs and let the sanctuary be the overflow. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's go. Let's start at the very top. One, two, three. I am tied to God because of his covenant connection with me. Go ahead. Here's the thing. I want us to open our ears to listen for the call of God in our lives. The Lord is calling out to us through different circumstances and scenarios. Instead of dismissing them, I, I, in those moments, I want us to ask the question, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying in this? What are you saying in this? Come on, let's go. I am tied to God because of his covenant connection with me. Go ahead. Now look at that number two. Covenant is maintained by God, but covenant is kept by me in my relationship with God. It's maintained by God. It's God has fixed his laws of the universe of covenant relationship. He keeps it. It is there. It is stationary. It is fixed. It will never move. But look at that third one. Uh, go back to that last script. Go back to that last script. Covenant is kept by me in my relationship with God. God maintains it, but you got to keep it. So whenever you decide to get back in fellowship with God, the Bible says, whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. See, God has already set salvation. It's already fixed. We just got to call. Amen, somebody? Come on, let's go to this last one. Here we go. Let's go to this last one. One, two, three. I am tied to God because of his covenant connection with me. Go ahead. Now, he, he, here's one way. Now, that, now, now, now I want to, I'm saying this for the benefit of our audience online watching. Here is how you know you have a good shepherd. Because the words of the shepherd are not their words. The words of the shepherd must be consistent with the words of the scripture. And the words of the scripture, here's how you know if you're hearing the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to tell you something that is all not already written in the book. And let me qualify this. It may not be word for word, but it may be by principle. Okay? It may be by principle. So how do you know that this is God? How, how many of you have ever been in a moment where, um, uh, yeah, me and uh, Sister Shu were talking last week. The words I spoke to somebody, somebody came right behind me and spoke the same words. And the same words that we spoke were like the same scripture that was used. That's how you know you're hearing from God. Amen, somebody? All right, amen. Let's do this class a little bit. Get on out of here. We're over time. Anyway, in this year of 2022, 
Come on, right hand before the Lord. Father, thank you for our time to gather together this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you have met us here in this place about your covenant with us. Thank you, oh God, that you desire to keep us in fellowship and relationship with you. Now, Lord, cause your face to shine upon your people. Bless them and give them peace. Lord, as they leave from this place, they never leave from your presence. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. Give the Lord a praise on the way out. God bless you today. You are dismissed. We'll see you Monday night for streaming and Tuesdays. Take it to the Lord and then Wednesday night again for critical conversation. God bless you. You are